Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're actually going to be covering an Abigail player here from KR with Amir. How are you doing today, Amir? Uh, really good, really good. I get to see an Abigail running one of my favorite augments, Stellar Charge this game. Yes, the Stellar Charge. I do believe we, we actually took a look at it just to see because, I mean, Stellar Charge isn't the most common pick. Uh, I believe we were looking at it there as a 7% pick rate in comparison to something like Vampiric, which is the more common build for Abigail players running at, I believe, 60 plus percent. Yeah, so Vamp was running at a 62% pick rate with Stellar Charge at a 7.4, which is... Uh... A pretty big difference, and we're also running Strider on this build, which is also one of the lower, uh, like, lower picked options. As Strider is a 6.1% pick rate, and Blade of Truth is an 83% pick rate. That is crazy. Now, Blade of Truth with a high pick rate, but honestly, I swear, I think I've been seeing a lot more of the Abigails picking up the Strider, taking the new tactic of stridering towards a target and instantly just raw eing on top of them to do a full burst combo instead of playing that slow play around w trying to get the marks yeah i think another nice thing is once you hit strider three it becomes very hard for characters without mobility such as dashes to start getting out of that uh that alt range as you can kind of just like strider three e onto them it applies the slow and then you do your i think it's d skill q uh into r and and it's just so much damage coming out and then after that because you have stellar charge you're able to throw out the uh the auto attack reset some of those cooldowns maybe have the e come back up and even though you didn't throw your w out to get the e reset you're just able to e right back onto them well exactly yeah and that's the that's the scariest part here and the, the worst part is is that most people when they see the strider abigail coming at them they might even blow their mobility button early to try and create that space so that the abigail can't get the jump on them but the second that you do that now abigail has an opportunity because she unless she presses e she hasn't technically wasted anything too important uh which leaves you a bit more exposed for her to be able to engage especially with strider having such a low cooldown i'm pretty sure it is 30 seconds at level two and 15 seconds at level three yeah 15 uh, at level three it, it is very scary with the uh like with how often it, it is up like some Mobility cooldowns are, I want to say, 10 to 11 seconds when you max them out, and it it just doesn't become worth spending your mobility tool to just run away from a Strider because even though she uses Strider, she doesn't she's not forced to engage. The second you use your mobility tool, now you're out of a big tool. Uh, Abigail still has the option to go W to one of your allies and then W onto you or W or sorry, just E right onto you. It's a uh, it can be really scary once you run out of your mobility tool against a stellar charge abigail no for sure and i think that's exactly it too is that i think stellar charge is really trying to play the same as ghost light but i think it actually works better abigail naturally already wants to auto attack with her passive proc to shred armor so you're already innately wanting to auto weave in after you've pressed all of your combo buttons and then on top of that i mean ghost light usually just gets wasted i honestly as much as i really love ghost light and i think it's probably one of my my favorite augments to play when i'm playing fun silly builds i feel like it loses so much value half the time when it procs and it just doesn't actually hit anything and there's that strider look at that just jumping off the bat on top of the hedge and, and just instantly kills her it doesn't matter that she ease it just instantly gone from the fight yeah it's very surprising i'm like i thought that maybe the hedgen was able to get out as she did use the e but we're able to connect the bat that we land the w on as well to use the strider mobility right after be able to run right onto the uh the hedgen e onto her and uh then pop the r she's on the floor yeah and i think this is a prime example you'll notice this on any good abigail player the utilization of animals with your w marking animals and using it to bounce to get either closer to an enemy or further away from an enemy really defines a good abigail player that has a full understanding of her mobility tools yeah it looks like we were actually going to try and buy an item but we realized our team is in the middle of a fight we're going to walk back over and yeah we just w e onto isaac and then strider to skip the isaac and uh get right onto the sicella throwing her out of this fight i don't know if we'll be able to get back onto her but we're applying so much pressure on this other side forcing a 1v2 and we're able to go forward unable to get the auto attack but our team's able to clean it up and i think this might be a wipe if the martina isn't able to get up in time yeah it and was yeah a wipe. that is a wipe a 
Yeah. yeah, and I mean that like, again. This is that's the crazy thing, right? Is that Abigail doesn't mind putting so much pressure onto that backline. She she literally just able to Strider jump onto the backline there, Cleave jump, and then Raw jump again on top of the Cicela to try and put pressure. And I think you were right. I think she was trying to buy her Strider three because it's a really quick buy immediately power up, but had to go and help the team fight. Yeah, if she had Strider 3 that fight, I honestly think the Cicela just falls on the floor the second she gets Eat on. Because the only reason we weren't able to kill her is we missed the R, which with Strider 3 should almost always connect on any character that doesn't have some sort of a dash to get out. Right, because of the uh, 40%, right? Yeah, the 40% slow coming out from Strider, which at one point I'm pretty sure was a 99% slow, but luckily we are not living in those days anymore. That is a definitely a scary time that I don't want to be in anymore. I mean, I love Strider right now. It's probably one of my favorites with the Strider 3 being able to be 15 seconds. It just feels so fun to constantly just press this button. Yeah, as someone who has been playing a lot of squishier characters, Strider has been my nightmare. <laughs> I see someone run up and then I'm like, oh, you know, I can take the fight. They Strider ignore all of my abilities by running right past them and then... Uh, and then are right on top of me, dealing insane amounts of damage with Strider, slowing me, and then able to connect all of their follow-up right after, which is, I think, one of Strider's biggest benefits. The fact that you get this slow and you get somewhat of a free mobility tool onto your opponent is... it's so underlooked. And no. yeah, we're just able to see, he goes forward, no W, just presses E, and then tries to push Cicela out of the fight. Sadly, think we're unable to do anything as Cecilia W'd our ult, so we couldn't actually get any value off of it. But our team might be able to make this work. Fiora is putting in a lot of damage here, landing some Qs. Both of our teammates blow up. We're able to put two stacks onto the Cecilia, put I... another two onto the Piolo. No, it's not looking good there for the Fiora, unfortunately. But hey, good attempt, though. I mean, right now, I think this playstyle may have looked sus right now because she's only on one item, which is the Strider upgrade. I genuinely think that you give her a couple more items, this play is going to look a lot less um, questionable and way more scary. Yeah, and we're actually really lucky that our Fiora still was just dead in the battle zone as... Otherwise, I think we'd just wipe there. Yeah, that would have that would have been a wipe. This game would have been a really scary one to look at of us just having a wipe so early on. But it's not done yet. We're, we're definitely still cooking because, yeah, that BZ happened. Try to be aggressive. And again, I think it's just, you know, Abigail just looking for those items. She is a scaling character. She's actually not known for her strong early game. She's known for her strong late game. Yeah, I know for NA, we used to be seeing... <laughs> sorry, Fiora throwing up the Wanda Mithril. I was hoping the bear might be able to listen to her and drop it for her, but um, we used to see a lot of Abigails skip out on buying any items and then rush straight for a blood into a... I think it was into Red Shoes or into blood their Blood Axe. And that was a bit of a meta for NA. I think KR was skipping out on that, buying primarily Force Cores going two force core items and then just trying to out damage everyone by being a big stat stick that hasn't changed too much abigail really loves having a lot of items being able to throw out like a ton of abilities in just a couple of milliseconds things that people don't really realize that you can de-skill and queue and like basically together and then you throw the r right after throw an auto in there as well you're dealing insane amounts of damage well, exactly. And you're also able to just utilize so much like pressure and damage for your team at that. I mean, I think I think both meta strategies are relatively the same right now. I think there there are some that are still trying to go for that blood prio, but a lot of people have been prioritizing. Uh, I believe it's Revenant, the, the chess piece that does percentage HP over time around you. I think that's been a really strong one on Abigail since the season four release. Yeah. Being able to uh, to stick on people really easily with Abigail, having the direct blink on top of them, and then you also just have so many good like tools to stay on them, with your Q giving you movement speed as it's casting, and then your W giving you a shield. As so Alongside, uh, Revenant gives you HP and a decent amount of defense, I think 25 defense, which means that you're not just doing more damage with the item, but you're also a bit tankier, allowing you to stick on them for even longer. But I think we might see a W over the wall. We won't get one. I think we're waiting for our Luke to come over. 
do we actually look for the engage? Yeah, There's Luke's looking for the engage by himself. His team not there. <laughs> yeah, I think our Luke is going to fall on the floor. We're going to have to try and clean this up if we don't want to spend another 250 credits. Throwing one on the floor. We don't have Strider up yet, up in eight seconds. Our Luke is actually going to get full killed. We're dodging everything. Sadly, we can't dodge the uh, Lee Dylan autos. We're getting the full kill, but though. But look at the mobility. That's, that is crazy. Like, this Abigail is utilizing her Stellar Charge cooldown reduction so well. Being able to get, like, using the raw E to get it back up and then immediately jumping onto Mark's targets with the W. It really just shows, like, this Abigail knows how to play around that re cooldown reduction on her on her mobility button. And it's, it's just so incredible because, yeah, exactly this there. They just terminated that team. A fight that looked terrible. The Luke basically throwing the fight immediately. Abigail and Fiora able to just turn it around and dodge all of the damage while just dishing out so much. Yeah, and then something I really like to say about Stellar Charge is the Stellar Charge essentially makes it so that a lot of characters with these short cooldowns never actually have to worry about what cooldown they're pressing. It will always be up. In that fight, we saw Abigail run in, throw W, throw E, auto attack, throw W again, throw E again, press R, Strider, it was up in 15 seconds. There was just, there was always something happening from our Abby, and her being a character that is built around pressing skills, being a skill amp character, is very important to have these up. For sure, and I mean... If we watch it here, I mean, we're we're not even playing the game. We're hovering on an expectating mode. And the character can get so dizzy in some of these plays, watching her hop and jump around between every single target, dodging, and again, utilizing those hops, not only to, you know, engage in gap close, but to also dodge abilities. Like you mentioned in that mid fight, she jumped between the haze and the hedgen, trying to make sure that she wasn't going to get hit while also getting closer and maximizing her damage output. Yeah, and then also in the middle of the fight, after they knocked the haze down, they were able to start going back and forth, trying to make sure that they get damage onto the haze that was on the floor to be able to get the full kill, reset some cooldowns, get the health back, and then take the fight again. Exactly. And I mean, as we saw, Revenant now purchased. She's now getting another buy Meteor. Uh, I believe it's probably going to be the Astronaut Helmet, I assume, because the headpiece right now is probably her weakest item, the Vigilant D. Nice early for, you know, just a little bit extra max HP. Oh, no, she goes the Nightmare Nails. Yeah, we're actually going to see Corrupting Touch come out here, as I think we're running... Uh, uh, I forget the name of it. I'm pretty sure it's called Overwatch. Um, or, yeah, it's Overwatch. Um, because we were already on 30% CDR before, and grabbing Nightmare Nails gives us the bonus uh, damage from actually upgrading to Nightmare Nails, because it gives us more amp. And then we also get, I think it's the 5 extra amp, or it's either 5 or 10 from uh, getting the bonus CDR that is now overcapping, which is kind of nice. Makes sense for sure. Utilizing that combination of her augments then to actually capitalize the best. But now as we see, replacing the headpiece as soon as she got the second meteor, which makes sense because again, I think uh, Vigilant is actually usually probably like one of the worst stats for a headpiece right now in the game for a purple. But yeah, it is it is decent for tankiness, a little bit extra HP, uh, and it helps with routing. I know a lot of characters take it for routing specifically. <laughs> yeah, I think it's honestly one of the like most easily easily routable items. Um, but in terms of its stats, it's I think the lowest amp headpiece in the game, <clears throat> and then. The only benefit you really get from it is health, as I know a lot of characters don't care too much about SP regen anymore, um, especially when it's a game where it's rainy, as you do get that bonus SP regen in the rain. Yeah, most people, if you need a drink, you're getting drinks anyway, so the SP regen doesn't usually make the difference on the character. Yeah, and then upgrading, we like I think the one of the biggest upgrades from going Astro Helm is obviously the debilitation, getting that bonus damage as you're kind of running around these fights, not always just directly in them, but getting the debilita debilitation proc, um, and then being able to run away for a bit. They're still ticking for damage, and then you come back in and reapply it, and then they're taking for more damage. I think we might actually come up to see this fight as these two teams are kind of dancing in and out back and forth from each other oh as soon as they get this vision they'll know it for sure though they'll see the third party coming um 
I do want to also go to a different topic and talk about we'll just see if this fight plays out first as they do actually catch this Abigail looking for oh there's the jump onto the body into then trying to get the gap close again this Abigail she just knows to utilize as much of the surroundings of court like other bodies as possible like utilizing these leaps is so interesting to watch from her being able to you know be so far away jump from an animal to a dead body to the target that she actually wants to get to and even using your alt just to try and dodge an extra auto so she can get her cooldowns back yeah she was able to also look for an auto attack onto i think it was the nikki um as she wasn't able to get an auto attack onto the gotcha she auto attacks nikki for the stellar charge proc and then uses that to get her w back up w over try and connect it i think sadly it missed but then off of that, she's able to ult, go for the E, and and look for more damage after that. For sure. And the thing I wanted to talk about before we got in, rudely interrupted by that incredible <laughs> fight is the EDOD, EOD boots. I didn't even realize this at the beginning, but what an interesting take. You know, the most tankiest boots, I believe, in the game, right? There's the 10 defense, the tenacity, you know, making sure she's not going to be the CC. And also has okay movement speed. So, like, pretty... Pretty interesting pickup for the character, trying to make sure that she stays surviving with that 145 defense. Oh, we're also going to switch off Nightmare Nails, as I think our teammate picked up a, uh, a Blood Ripper, and it is honestly getting Blood Ripper, getting that extra pen. We don't need the attack speed too much, but it does allow us to get that passive auto a bit earlier, and I think we're going to get Blood Scythe here, yep. But I do like the, the choice of EOD boots. Um, honestly, any boots with tenacity is very nice, especially on a character like Abigail, where a lot of your counterplay is just being locked down and CC'd. So if we're able to deny as much of that CC as possible, then we can play the game for a bit longer. And then off of that, hopefully win more fights. For sure. Now, one thing I find really interesting about this, though, is that because they made that change on the arm, they're at 20% CDR now which seems okay i mean it's gonna work out i believe for her anyways i think 20 percent is okay working on abigail but i do believe that it is a little lack like losing i feel like nightmare nails should still bring more value but i guess they they prioritize the double per percentage pen um i think another nice thing is that we're switching off of weak heal cut to strong heal cut going from 40 to 60 percent uh, right and yeah. hopefully we switch off to some sort of cdr boots we can either go glacials or uh, i think wild walkers um there's we, like we still have a few options to regain the cdr i don't think we're going to end up doing it we might end up going i know the uh the typical route for a lot of abigails is iron maidens but seeing that we have the uh iron ball in our inventory we might be going for hermes yeah, I think it might be a Hermes angle. So just because she's giving up this tree, that means that she's not going... Or, yeah, they're trading the Force Core, so she's going Hermes is the final thing. Uh, the other thing, yeah, like you mentioned, I completely forgot to think about it, is that because she's now got the enhanced heal cut on her arm, Abigail's probably one of the best heal cut appliers. She has so much AoE cleave that she's always hitting multiple targets if they're close together, which are all the effective area targets that you want to be hitting anyways. Yeah, she jumps in, hits D skill, that can hit three people, W hit three people, Q hit three people, Alt hit three people. The only thing that can't is honestly her E, which is a point and click blink onto who she wants to be killing. Unless she hit three people, then she can <laughs> E three people. <laughs> yeah, and then she can E through three people and uh, it's she's just always applying it. But she's going forward here, Strider onto the Piolo, just able to remove him from the fight instantly. He didn't even get to play the game. Yeah, and, and the wor the scariest part is, is that she had the tools because of Stellar Charge to actually E again onto the Cicela, and Cicela had to respect it. She immediately ran away, put no pressure, because she knew if she went to try and contest the Abigail, Abigail could have also just decided that they're going to blow up the Cicela instead. Yeah, Cicela watched. She saw Piolo getting put on the floor, and she's like, nah, I don't want this. Like, get me out. Yeah. Walked into the gas station <laughs> store, and then just... She instantly pressed W the second she saw Piolo start getting engaged on. I mean, let's be real here. Anytime that you watch a mugging like that, you walk into the gas station store <laughs> and you pretend that you didn't see anything. <laughs> yep, this, I wasn't a part of it. It's okay. <laughs> but yeah, we do see the Cicela team run out and then make their way. I think they're probably going to try and escape um, or they'll try and fight. Um oh wait i think a team already escaped oh, wait, so they yeah, can yeah they're tping back in the gas station they're going for uh, yeah, the fight no. over here as we can see like 
Fiora found the TP. I mean, oh, oh Abig wait, actually, Abigail's oh. found the the Sacella. Let's watch this. Let's, let's actually watch the character we're supposed to be paying attention to. As and yeah, this this fight isn't even close. It <laughs> it feels very unfair for what Sacella can do into what she can do into Abby as. Our Abby just pressed Strider, auto attack, throw the W, throw the E. Cicela has no real mobility to get out of that, and uh, we're just able to put her on the floor within seconds. Exactly, and it's, it's this burst pressure and power that is so terrifying. And I think the other part that makes it really scary is that this Abigail is very comfortable with the cooldown adjustments. She knows how to play around her cooldowns, and she knows that she has this extra, basically, reset of cooldowns that she can utilize in a fight. Yeah, because with Stellar Charge, I, I do think that this augment is very good as they did nerf it. I think last patch going from 40% cooldown reduction to 35%. Um, I think it's very strong, but you need to understand what cooldowns are allowed to be reset on what combos. And this Abigail understands everything about her character. She's going in, throwing the W, throwing the E, making sure that her W's up every time she goes for that auto attack. She's able to throw the W again, going for a bonus shield. Like, we're basically a tank, bruiser, assassin, DPS, uh, warlock, going in for... Oh, and yeah, we're going in here, we just hit the WE, we're sadly completely missed the ult, but it doesn't matter, as we just keep going forward. Hitting the W again, getting so much shielding, they're unable to kill us, as we're so tanky as well, with 182 defense. The ult hits so much damage, as it's percent health true damage, but... We're just going back and forth, unable to be hit. That That is incredible. Again, it's just like immediately pushing Haze out of that fight, putting so much pressure, and then the tankiness that allow her to sustain while she waits for her, her to be able to make another play, and able to still clean up a fight that looked really shaky at that point. Like you mentioned, I mean, this Abigail didn't land the most cleanest alts this game, but you don't always have to land the big flashy alt to really carry on this character. You can use it to be able to save yourself a few frames of damage, and that's what this Abigail did today, and I hope you guys will see you in the next video.